Now you know why you're getting the results you're getting. It has nothing to do with your intellect. Your intellect, you can figure out how to do things. But that doesn't mean you're going to do them. You'll hear people say, I believe that, but their behavior would indicate they've never even heard of it. Why? We believe something on a conscious level. On a subconscious level, the paradigm believes something else. There's a word called praxis. Praxis is the integration of belief with behavior. One of the cool things about giving the knowledge that I have is that I'm able to receive knowledge in return. And we talked about the circuit. As I get my conscious mind out of the way after finishing a lesson, then so much more comes in. <laughs> and after I did the last video, Even Flow, I had so much come to me that I'm going to have to end up doing another video. But before I do, I need to get a few things that I've been meaning to get out of the way done first. One of those things is the idea of praxis that Bob Proctor spoke about. The integration of the subconscious beliefs with the conscious beliefs for mutual benefit instead of having them play off against each other. Because if they are at odds with each other, which side do you think is going to win? Well, you already know the answer to that. Most people can understand this concept. It's very logical and it makes sense. But how many people have actually given serious thought to and listed the limiting core beliefs that they have that are holding them back? Most of the limiting core beliefs involve a lack of self-worth and or deservingness. And this is something to keep in mind when we revisit blockages. If, for example, one has the limiting core belief that they don't deserve money, how might that affect the outcome of them doing a money spell? And you can see how this may be a bit of a problem. A conflict of interest between the two halves of the mind. This is probably what's going on with me right now because I've been having my recording equipment suddenly act up and, you know, not work right. I'm getting shorts in the lines. Because even if people look to me for the answers and I have those answers for them, on a subconscious level, I may not really feel deserving enough to teach. Which comes from my childhood programming. You have to get used to the idea that we've all been programmed. As I said before, I'm not worthy of praise. So when people look to me for answers and spiritual guidance, it weirds me out. Am I the best person to be teaching these things? Probably not. But there aren't a whole lot of people talking about these things and from the understanding that I have of them. I do what I can, but at the same time, since praxis hasn't been totally achieved yet, when I start working on these lessons, my equipment starts malfunctioning. I thought maybe I just needed to acknowledge that because it seems to be working a lot better now. I mean, when it really comes down to it, the biggest answer that I have for people is they need to find the answers within themselves. But most people don't know how to go about doing that. They don't know where to look in themselves. So that's what I'm trying to get to. I know it's a pretty sad state of affairs in the world if I'm the one having to explain these things to people. <laughs> on that, I can achieve praxis on. So what other core belief programming can negatively affect your magic? Uh, one of the big ones is your religious programming. Whatever you were brought up in as a child. For me personally... My parents were, and still are, very strict Christian conservatives. One with the viewpoint that magic and the occult are evil and of the devil. Doesn't matter that they don't understand it. Doesn't matter that they never looked into it far enough to see the, all the Judeo-Christian aspects of ceremonial magic. Doesn't matter that they don't know what they're talking about. Being brought up in that environment is going to program me as a child on the subconscious level. I can consciously disagree with and reject that religious programming, but the subconscious has already been programmed. You see? How might that affect my magic? It could be a huge obstacle and is for many people. Now, not everyone was brought up with that, but many people were. If you were brought to church or Sunday school on a semi-regular basis during your childhood by your parents, whatever religion that may be, is going to become part of your subconscious core beliefs. 
Now, you can try to change those core beliefs, um, but all the beliefs that are built upon those core beliefs are going to come tumbling down with it. That may or may not be always a good thing. And also, it's very, very difficult to change a core belief on your own without seeking some kind of professional help. I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just saying that it's difficult. However, in this particular case, it may not even be necessary. See, there's a lot of people involved in magic that have an aversion to Christianity, the Bible, Scripture, Hebrew names, etc., etc. I love the Scripture, which may sound odd considering I never liked being brought up in that environment. But I love it because it helps me achieve praxis. The weirded out feeling that I told you about before is the same feeling I get when I'm doing the analysis of the keyword and I jump from a Judeo-Christian reference to an Egyptian deity reference. Because there's a clash in the programming. I'll play up the Judeo-Christian Hebrew stuff and play down the Egyptian. Doesn't mean that it won't be the exact opposite for somebody else. Instead of allowing the core belief to become an obstacle, I'm now using it to my advantage. I'll frequently incorporate scripture into my magic. So it shall be written, so it shall be done. Ask, and ye shall receive. And because it's in alignment with what the subconscious believes, and the programming that has been put into it, <laughs> I'm telling you, it um, can be pretty powerful. The uncrossing ritual that... Um, I told you about in a previous video reading the Psalms and that's from hoodoo <laughs> see this is why hoodoo and Haitian Vudan and and Santeria and these other um, religions are very 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 powerful because they've achieved uh, a praxis. The uh, Haitian Vudan is like a mix of African shamanism, uh, French occultism, I believe, and Catholicism. And it's through the blending of these things that they're able to achieve this praxis where these beliefs work together instead of against each other. Finding ways to use what you got to propel you instead of hindering you. In the case of core beliefs involving self-worth and being deserving, it may be easier to add on to the core beliefs to change them around instead of trying to tear them down or change them all together. I may not deserve money, but I get it anyway. <laughs> or I don't deserve money lacking in my life. Little additions can change the whole thing around. The idea and concept being that it may be easier to build upon the foundations that you have instead of ripping them entirely all the way down. Because it may not be necessary to go through that, which can be a very difficult and intense process. So hopefully this has given you some perspective on Praxis and what Bob Proctor was talking about and how it relates to all this. You should be able to start finding your own limiting core beliefs and begin to get them to work for you instead of against you. And I'll see you next time. Take care.